That's right. We are paying uh, Pachauri personally to take 1,700 of our workers' jobs and transfer, not the workers, just jobs, to India, where he will make money again by various credits under the Clean Development Mechanism, which is Lord one of the boondoggers run by the UN. It's unbelievable. Got to break again. Long segment coming up. Let's go into some more fraud, like Al Gore saying the ice caps will all melt in three to seven years. We'll be right back. Science and public policy, all one word, scienceandpublicpolicy.org. We're going back to Lord Christopher Moncton, third Viscount of Moncton and Brinchley, the leading voice in the fight against the foundation of world government, the climate cult, which Al Gore admits will be a new religion. We're going back to him in just a moment. If you want to understand these people and see the UN's own documents, their own statements, understand what they will set up if they're successful, a total eco-tyranny of collectivism, transferring our money to these criminal bureaucrats, you need to get my film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, on DVD. You can get this film free for a limited time when you order my newest film over two hours long, Fall of the Republic. Detailing the climate scam, the fraudsters, how they're running the scam, what they plan to do with it, how to beat them. You can also get free T-shirts for a limited time that spread the word against the globalist at InfoWars.com and the online video bookstore uh, Freedom Paraphernalia, as the media has called it. Uh, Pro-liberty uh, T-shirts to spread the word, meet like-minded people, free T-shirts available for a limited time at InfoWars.com. You can also get uh, five months free in the New Year's special that will end in a week and a half. It will end uh, January 15th. You can get five and a half months free right now and watch the simulcast of the radio show. The radio show is obviously free on AM and FM, shortwave satellite, uh, but uh, the, the streaming video, 15 cents a day, or if you get the five-plus months free, it's even less than 15 cents a day at PrisonPlanet.tv. You can download the high-quality video archives, share them with friends, you name it, at PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, Lord Moncton, long segment. Sorry for the breaks interrupting uh, your, your, uh, your, your, your statements there. Uh, we were getting into fraud, and the head of the IPCC uh, openly profiting with Gordon Brown paying taxpayer money to shut down ancient high-quality uh, jobs, jobs that have been there for a long time, to ship them there for his profit. Now, there's so many other instances, and there's the classic Climate Gate emails. Ben Santer, three weeks ago, the interview aired on True TV. Top ratings for that show, by the way, number one show on True TV, showing the interest where Ben Santer admits, finally admitting what you exposed years ago, that he removed five separate sections from the U.N. IPCC report on man-made global warming, where their own scientists said man wasn't doing it. Perhaps we should revisit that and, and more of where Climate Gate uh, is right now. Lord Moncton. Right. Well, that's quite an agenda. Let's finish off on uh, Dr. Pachauri, shall we? Uh, the other thing I've done is to report him to the British Charity Commission uh, with a request that they should pass on the details to the police because he runs, along with Crispin Tickell and Sir John Horton, who is the former chairman of the IPCC, a charity called TERI Europe. That is the Energy Research Institute Europe, founded originally by Tatar Steel Industries. And, of course, it's Tatar Steel, which happens to be taking over this steel works and shutting it down in um, the UK and opening it in India to make more profit twice over out of our subsidies and destroying 1,700 of our jobs. Well, this man, Pachari, because these jobs have been destroyed, I'm now having a very close look at him and what he's doing to our people. And I discovered he'd set up this charity along with uh, the former chairman of the IPCC, the UN's climate panel, John Horton. And that charity, in each of the last three years, has declared income of only seven or 8,000 sterling. In fact, in the last four years added together, less than 25,000 sterling. And yet, on the website of the Department of the Environment here, a government department, I have found a grant of £30,714 just in one year, 2006-7, to the Qatar Energy Research Institute Europe, this charity which has declared only £25,000 of income in total over four years. On one grant on one of its projects, it has received more than the money it declared for four years. 
Now, that is false accounting, and I have asked for an explanation from the Charities Commission. There may be, and let's be fair, an innocent explanation, but I'm blowed if I can see one. And what I think is building up here is a sense that these people thought that they had become above the law. They thought they'd got the mainstream media where they wanted them, that nobody would ask any questions about any of this, that they could do what they liked with British people's jobs, American people's jobs. There's just been a large American um, aluminum smelter closed down. Again, about 2,500 jobs destroyed overnight. Why? Because the company that ran it can no longer find anyone to sell it electricity to run the smelter. Because aluminum smelting takes a lot of electricity. And because the Greenies and the environmental Marxists have gone round banning the building of new coal-fired power stations and also stopping nuclear ones being built, America is running out of the energy that is needed to safeguard jobs. Meanwhile, so to America, interrupt... Major closures, it's happening in Britain, major closures, major losses of jobs directly attributable to this financial and scientific fraud, for that is what it now is. And at a number of different places, we're now getting investigations. There is, of course, now the Climate Gate investigation. Now, the original terms of reference for that were rather soft. It was just a little bit of a slap on the wrist for the university for having perhaps um, not complied with the Freedom of Information Act when other scientists asked for information. That's bad enough, heaven knows, in a matter where they're about to spend trillions on the face of these scientists whose work we can't check because they won't give us their data. But on top of that, I have now written to the chairman of this inquiry who's been appointed, and I've said, look, mate, there is a large scientific and financial fraud underlying all this, and since I am named in these climate gate emails, because they don't like me very much, as you can imagine, these nasty scientists who are trying to undermine the world with their bogus science, um, I've said since they've named me in very uncomplimentary terms, in these emails, I want the right of reply by giving, by having the right to explain to the inquiry why I say that it is a financial and scientific fraud, and I'm going to produce all the evidence I've built up of what these particular people who are named in the Climate Gate emails as writing to each other in furtherance of this fraud. I'm going to show what they've done over the years. I gave a presentation on this in Copenhagen, and you should have seen the jaws dropping all around the room. As I said, I've been following all these people for years. I've been watching them committing scientific fraud. I've suspected all along that they were linked, and now we have the evidence, thanks to the Climate Gate whistleblower, showing that they are linked. This is an organized conspiracy of not very many people. You know, it's not as though we're talking of thousands of scientists in this conspiracy. It's about two dozen. Lord they have effectively driven the whole show by being absolutely vicious to any scientist who dared to disagree with them. They've had scientists sacked from their jobs. They've had them threatened. They've had them bullied. They've denied access to the peer-reviewed journals to them. They've stopped them getting their material into the UN's climate report. These people have been driving this scare, and they have been so nasty that they've terrified ordinary scientists who aren't very political and aren't very strong-willed into silence so that they could then claim that because none of these scientists dare to argue with them for fear of losing their jobs, therefore there is a consensus. And, and that, then, of course, is the nastiest kind of fraud. Lord Moncton, and then when they, scientists 31,000, did try to testify last year in Congress, they were blocked from being able to testify, even though they've been persecuted. But expanding on that... I saw a number in the BBC just a month ago of China opening a new coal-powered plant every two and a half days. And right here in Texas, in East Texas, I have some family land and uh, family that lives there. And they were going to build a new clean-burning coal plant to uh, power several new factories that we're going to be moving in. And none of that happened because local environmentalists under uh, green funding from the U.N. and the federal government ran around terrorizing and threatening lawsuits, and it didn't happen. And so uh, those plants were not built anywhere in the United States. It was multiple uh, clean-burning, coal-powered plants uh, that literally nothing comes out of there but uh, steam and carbon dioxide. And... and, and 
we see Al Gore, we see the government, we see Maury Strong, we see George Soros. They control, and you've spoken about this, but if you can elaborate briefly, about how they get to decide where the federal money goes for new energy, and it's always invested with their companies that they make profits from. I mean, this isn't just them trying to set up a global government and tax system. It's a new dark age where they are the only people that get a letter of mark or license from this new imperial crown of the U.N. Uh, to be able to even engage in any type of uh, manufacturing.